Hi there, I'm Suzanne, your friendly Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. Welcome to my monthly paper pumpkin alternative video on my YouTube channel and blog. I share five alternative ways to use the kit in this video and I sell the products I feature as well. I hope you enjoy my free video tutorial and would love to see you sign up with me as a paper pumpkin subscriber. Visit sunstampin.com for more information. For this month's paper pumpkin called Winter Woods, which is for the October 2019, I am just showing you an unboxing like I usually do. The This month is going to coordinate with next month. And here is the stamp set. It has a big snowflake, some falling snow. Uh, my Knight of Navy ink spot is going to be replaced with my regular size Knight of Navy for ease of use in the video. This is the directions. The front cover shows what the project is supposed to look like. And here are the steps to get there. I usually toss them away. And these are, I don't know what kind of trees, maybe cedar. I'm not sure. Uh, I know um, coniferous trees better than deciduous trees. There's envelopes, there's card fronts, there's little red cardinals. And moving on into card number one. These are the supplies you're going to require. A Whisper White thick card base and two of those trees, tree card bases. So I'm jabbing my scissor right in close and I am going to cut the trees out in a hole. So I am going to use this card front in card number two. So I'm not going to throw it away. Nothing goes to waste at this craft desk, but I am only cutting the tree out and nothing more. I'm trying to be very conservative. All right, so here is the, I'm and the two trees I am fussy cutting out. And I have heard from some viewers that have said, oh, you're crazy with the fussy cutting. I hate fussy cutting. You must have young eyes, that sort of thing. So I just wanted to show you again how I do it. My hand stays pretty much stationary. I cut with the, um, at the very beginning of my scissors where, where they incise, if you will. I rarely um, fussy cut with the tips. You do not have any control. You can see that my scissor hand pretty much stays stationary. I rarely like move the scissor around. It's the paper that I move around and I take my time and there's a very good light above me. So I don't require, well, I don't require glasses anyway, but if a person would, I could see that maybe you would want more lighting. Hey, that's my new trimmer. Do you like it? <laughs> I love it. I think it's a really nice addition to the tools that Stampin' Up! is offering. I do still have the plastic on to reduce some shine. Um, and that's like a coating over top of the trimmer but I haven't had to replace the blades yet. So just saying, and I've been using it quite a bit. I've been taking it through its paces. All right, so I trimmed this down to four by five and a quarter. So that there's a little white border all the way around and I have adhered the, the tree card front to my Whisper White Thick card base. I always say that if you are trying to duplicate any of the designs that I am creating here, you might want to get yourself some Whisper White thick cardstock because that's pretty much what I like to use. I've put dimensionals on the back of these two trees and I'm adhering them to the front so they're popping up. If you could take this one, this card design one step further and you can fussy cut a third front tree and pop that up so that you would have like multi-layered trees on the card front. I think that would look really cool. Anyway, here is my Wink of Stella Clear Brit Glitter Brush Pen, say that three times, uh, and I have run it all over the uh, trees. That was me seasoning my stamp. It just meant that I had to ink it up, stamp it off on a scratch piece of paper, and then ink it up and stamp it on my project. So this little sentiment 
piece, I am uh, bending with my bone folder just to create a curve. And in the very middle, I am putting three dimensionals to which I am removing the release paper and placing on the bottom of my card. Really simple design. It is a fun and unique way of creating a little bit more dimension with the cards that you have. Card number two. These are the supplies you're going to require. The laser cut trees and the card base that has the hole in it. So I'm going to make this card front now. I'm going to do like I did with the other one and make it four by five and a quarter. I am basically cutting a little bit more off of one side to create the hole in the center. And then I have a rectangular piece of Whisper White here as well. All right, out comes my Tombow Mono Adhesive or my wet glue. And I place that all over the back side and then put it on my Whisper White thick card base. Now these are the mini dimensionals that come in the kit and they have a very thick border. So I trim down probably like, I don't even know, like a quarter of an inch, even less, just a sliver, uh, and I, two slivers basically, and I put them behind the skinny trees. Then I trimmed the skinny trees from their snowbank base and just set it aside for a second while I stamped the sentiment in my Knight of Navy ink. Now I'm going to remove the release paper from my skinny trees and place my skinny trees on the rectangle. And I am making a point to try to be straight. Simple cards like this do require a little bit of attention when that happens. All right, trimming off the excess and then I will be putting a dimensional adhesive on the back of my rectangle piece and I'm going to cover the hole. Now it needs a little something, right? What do you think it needs? <laughs> a little bit of that red cardinal. So I am making almost like a, a thicker. <laughs> so I put two together because one was kind of bendy and I do want them on the tree and their tails kind of hang off and so they could flop around and bend and look askew. So I'm putting two together so that the they have a little bit more, more I don't know, girth, if you will. And I will be applying a product on top and I do want, and that's, part of the reason I do want them to be sturdy. All right, so here's the placement. I have my take your pick tool and my wet glue, and I'm going to take my little cardinal here and glue it to the tree. It is exactly what that card needed. All right, and here's my number two. I'm putting it into place and then I am going over it with the shimmery crystal effects that is new in the catalog. It is a thick glue actually, but it dries clear with sparkles. So I figured these little birdies required a little sparkle. Folding the crease with my bone folder and there is card number two.
All right, card number three. So these are the products that you're going to require. I'm showing off my new letter opener that my best friend bought me. It has a dragon on it. How cool is that? So I'm opening my envelope. As you probably, if you've watched these videos before, I usually tear into the envelope. So I have regular envelopes. So I don't necessarily require different envelopes. And I do, it gives me some extra play with some of the products. So you see what I did there? I cut all the flappy parts off. Now I'm just folding it and making a little crease in the center. And I'm just going to cut and make two pieces. That was the simplest way because I don't do math very well. Uh, so that was the simplest way. <laughs> so here I have a little bit of the envelope and it has silver on it. So I am going to do this with all four sides of my, my piece of paper here that looks like wood. I'm going to wrap it in the silver foil that is in the envelope. I hope that made sense. Well, you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, okay, so basically I'm putting down a line of glue pretty close to the silver line, not going over top of it. And then I'm kind of smearing the edge of the paper to, right, and mixing that glue in there so it has really good adhesion. And then trimming off as I need it. I'll do a final trim off in a second. But... This is a way of framing that beautiful wood grain paper. And I'm just using the supplies within my kit because I always get people saying, hey, I would love to be able to do the card designs that you do, but I don't have all the supplies that you have. And trust me, although it might seem that I have all the supplies, I really don't. I actually craft on a budget. That's why I became a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what a, what a cool job it's turned out to be, I gotta say. So as you can see here, just with my big scissors, I am trimming off the extra white part. And now I have a wood grained designer paper designed by me uh, encased in silver. Here is my non-porous surface. It is a Stamparatus grid mat that I laminated. And this is balmy blue. So this is um, a blue that is a little bit lighter than Knight of Navy. And if you don't have that color, here I am using Knight of Navy as well. So, um, and I, it, it really, I did want a two-tone background, but yeah, it didn't happen. Um, and you didn't notice it. So it doesn't matter. You can just use simple, very softly brushing on the Knight of Navy. Now, those brushes that you saw me use, you will find them on Amazon and they are called toothbrush handled makeup brushes. And people have asked me a million times which ones to get. Get the cheapest ones. Don't spend a lot of money on these. They're all the same. So if you would like to get a blending brush, uh, they work fantastic, but just get them at Amazon and the, you know, the cheaper you can get the better. And here I did put a little bit of painter's tape and um, I saved the crease. All right. So those are the dimensionals on the back of my piece. And I'm going to fold it and use my bone folder to score or to fold down the score. Now, this is my fine tip glue pen. You don't have to use a fine tip glue pen. Uh, the Stampin' Up! kit or the Paper Pumpkin kit has given you glue dots. I happen to like my glue pen <laughs> a little bit better than those flat glue dots. And here I am using my Take Your Pick tool and I'm picking up a snowflake and then I'm um, using the pokey end and um, placing the snowflakes where I would like them. All right, I have put the sentiment down and I am putting dimensionals on the back of my sentiment in the place that I require. And the sentiment goes down exactly right there.
These are the supplies you're going to require, a Whisper White Thick Card Base. Now, I am using uh, that leftover piece, but I'm not going to use the trees. I'm going to use the snow part. And these were, uh, this is the negative piece of the trees. And I'm going to create a sloping hill. And I don't know if you noticed it or not, but the paper is kind of shimmery, which is nifty. And so you're going to know which way is up or the right way around because one side is more shimmery than the other. So I am cutting and making sure that my hill looks like a natural slope. And here I'm going to pull out the trees again and use the negative piece on this one. So I have three hills. They worked out perfectly. So now I'm going to bring in that uh, blending brush again. So again, someone undoubtedly is going to ask again which one they should buy. So I'll reiterate, just buy the ones that are the cheapest from Amazon. You can look it up. They are called toothbrush handled makeup brushes. All right, so I've sponged on Night of Navy. So I'm not even going out of the box on this one. I'm just using the Night of Navy that comes in the kit. I'm putting glue down on my first snowbank and then a dimensional adhesive on my second snowbank. And then on my third snowbank, I'm actually going to use the, I call this the dimensional bones. So these are the foam strip bits that are kind of left after you have used all of your dimensionals. I call them the bones. <laughs> and I am putting it on the card instead. So here's a little tip. Um, I'm going to double the, my third snowbank up. But what will happen is if I don't neutralize the stickiness of the dimensional bones that are on the strip right now, my snowbank may cave and stick to the bones that are on the card. Are you getting my meaning here? So I neutralized it with my embossing buddy. Then I put, took the release papers off and now even if my snowbank touches that um, second adhesive, the bones that I put on first, it won't stick. So I won't have a warped snowbank. That was a lot of description for what I just did. <laughs> Thank goodness I don't have to type that out. All right, so here I am stamping the snow falling. That's right. And I should have done this initially, but I didn't think of it until I was creating this card. You know how really bright ideas come in? I just felt, oh, geez, that's too plain. And then, so now I'm going in and I'm stamping off to get a lighter color. And then I'm sort of masking off so I don't have double. So, and it turned out great. Turned out random, turned out perfect. All right, so now I have to put the dimensional adhesive on the back of my sentiment piece. I always look to where the sentiment actually is so that I'm able to have the dimensional adhesive right behind it. And I'm a dimensional abuser. So I'm just placing the sentiment where I like it. I'll snip off the end 
And then it's time to decorate. So I'm doing the very same thing that I did in the last card with my little cardinal, doubling him up. We got a lot of cardinals in this card kit. So I'm doubling him up and then I will put a dimensional behind him. I had to cut one in half in order to fit it. And I placed it on him on the sentiment. And then I will go in with my Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen and put some extra sparkle on him. This is a sparkly card. Here is the directions <laughs> and I am working over the directions with my glue. So I am using the wide end of my glue and I'm gonna rub my finger over that just to smooth it down a little bit. And then I am using new in the catalog. Uh, it's called Ice Stampin' Glitter. Now it's thick, chunky glitter that looks like snow. You could use regular glitter if that's all you have and you don't have to use anything at all if you don't want to. Uh, you could use washi tape that has glitter on it. You could do puff paint if you have that and you don't have the glitter. The um, I tend to veer towards new embellishments all the time. Now I'm using the Shimmer Crystal Effects on my Cardinal and I set that off to dry. So the Crystal Effects take a while. I would say at least good two hours before they're finally cured. But I love this, it was very wintry. All right, this is my last and final card design for this month of October. For this card design, I am using a ruler and a pencil, and I am pretty much, I think it was just about a half an inch. I was drawing a half inch line on my Whisper White Thick card base. I just did three of them. Now I am inking up with Balmy Blue and then I am sponge daubing the Knight of Navy on the two sentiments that I adhered to a longer block. If you don't have a longer block, I've heard people use rulers, like clear rulers, that works too. You can put two sentiments from the card kit in one line because they're the same size and everything. So now, um, and I've cleaned in between and I'm just showing you the stamping now, but uh, each, each stamping I inked up with Balmy Blue, I daubed with Knight of Navy, then I cleaned up. So this is my makeshift mask here, just a little piece of typing paper. And I am making all of my snowflakes a little different. This one had balmy blue and it had Knight of Navy in the center. Some, I actually brought in some seaside spray and then sometimes I stamped it straight with Knight of Navy. So I was just playing around with my three blues that I know that go really well together. So some of the snowflakes, I just daubed on the center. You know how they say that every snowflake is different? Like you won't find two of the same crystallizations. That's what I was trying to get at here with this coloring. And then closer to the end here, I wanted one uh, right there. So I had to move my little mask and there it is. Okay, so now, oh, and there's one more. All right, so now you have to erase your pencil line because you want everyone to think that you stamped this straight without any help. <laughs> Uh, erasers make good erasers, put it that way. 
All right, so here is my another one of those envelopes and I wanna get at one of the longest silver strips. So here's my brand new trimmer again and it does these very thin strips of paper without any problem whatsoever. I am very impressed with the blade and how it long it lasts. I've had it for almost a month now. So I put a strip of glue and now my strip of silver goes down. And I know that it seems pretty simple. Um, I didn't add a whole heck of a lot extra. I added some of the embellishments, the white snowflakes and I just sort of sprinkled them on the page randomly and this is where they fell. So I just put a dot of fine tip glue pen. Of course you could use the glue dots in the kit to do this and place them where you like. And yeah, it, they were pretty simple. And I think if I had an oval and maybe I had like a bigger die cut of a snowflake, I probably could have put a better uh, greeting. Uh, this is very simple. So I didn't want to overstep the boundaries of the box. So these are my card designs for October. I hope you like them and I hope you subscribe. Thank you so much for those of you who have subscribed. I'll catch you in another video. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. On screen are two more videos for inspiration. Click on the maple leaf for my blog or click on me to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching.